Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Something Something Podcast. And we are smack dab in the beginning of Spooktober. With me, as always, is Larry Sands. How's it going, Larry? Uh, Everything is great, Eric. How are you? I'm doing pretty good myself. It is my favorite time of the year. I know most people like to listen to that song, The Most Wonderful Time of the Year During Christmas, but not me. I listen to that song right now. But again, to me, Halloween starts in September. No doubt. I agree with that. That I I absolutely agree with. Yes. Yes. So, Um, Larry, mm -hmm. we have got some very exciting things coming up um, with the beginning of Spooktober, my favorite time of the year. But um, you've got something going on that's pretty amazing and everybody should follow your instagram because of what's happening in pretty much a few hours yes yes actually uh by this time well gosh i guess in the next day or so i will be in greece i'm about to shoot a documentary about chasing love um going to greece with three couples and two single people and gonna watch them and experience how they reconnect with each other and find love on the island Greece, which really, I guess, started love, I suppose. But yeah, going to Greece, man. That is awesome, Larry. So, Larry, I love, excuse me, my state of New Jersey. Yes, you do. We are an odd state at times. We're a big city state, but we're also more Midwest than right. most places on the East Coast, I feel. And I've decided that I want to try to do the bulk of my work film wise here in Jersey. Right. And about a year ago, I made a great friend, um, Janice, the mayor of Clinton, New Jersey. Yes. And remember there her is. Well. There is something there in Clinton, New Jersey called the Red Mill, which just fascinates me. And we have a connection to that because our friends, Unexplained Cases, did an investigation there a a few years ago. So, Larry, I am horrible with names, so I'm going to let you try to pronounce, uh, make sure you get our guest names right. So introduce our guest, Larry. Eric, I knew you would do this. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So everybody. Vicente? (laughs) Right, Vicente. Yes. (laughs) Thank you for reminding me. Uh, Everybody, we have Amy. Her name is Amy DeVita from Red Mill. Uh, Amy, let's start out a little bit talking. Give us a brief. Well, welcome to the show, first and foremost. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. And we also have Ray. Again, you're going to have to help us with your last name. It's Bendis. 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 Ray Bendis. Actually, um, give us a little bit. So, Amy, what is, is your position at the Red Mill? And Ray, what is your position at Red Mill? Because it's, I find it, find it fascinating that that there's a board members to start out the show let's talk a little bit about the history and you guys being on the board it's pretty fascinating sure so um so the red mill museum village is a nonprofit organization it's a it's an official 501c3 um, charity and as such we have a board of trustees Um, I'm on the board. I am currently the president of the board. Um, Prior to that, I was vice president and I've been on the board for roughly, I forget how many years. (laughs) You stop counting after a while, basically. Um, And um, so currently um, it is a volunteer, sorry, it is a volunteer board. I think we have about 18 board members, um, everyone who contributes in many ways to the success and what the Red Mill Museum Village is throughout the year. But without a doubt, um, Ray Bendis here is hands down (laughs) the the, um, haunted um, head honcho. Yeah, Um, probably 
Alex, about 12 years ago, my wife and I used to travel around the tri-state area to different haunted attractions. I actually live just outside of the town of Clinton and never came here until one year we finally came in and it was great. The crew that ran it were just amazing. And then I got involved with them and somehow I ended up taking over all of the responsibilities for Haunted, which is a year long project because as soon as we open, we start planning for next year. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, Ray, what got you? What got you interested? Because you're the resident paranormal investigator, right? Well, I'm friends with Daryl and Mustafa and all those guys, and I'm usually here when they're here. Okay. <laughs> what what started what started your interest in the paranormal? Uh the connection to Halloween, I would have to say, and things like that, just broadening the horizons. That's cool. That's cool. What That's about awesome. you, Amy? I, this is the most I've been around haunted ever. <laughs> really? Um, yes. We, I, I'm stepping in to help out our, our executive director recently left for another opportunity. And until we have a new executive director on board, I'm, I'm jumping in and helping out here. But um, this has been, this is our 32nd annual um, Red Mill, haunted Red Mill. And no, so we should correct when, that and oh, say sorry. 30 second live. Live, yes. We did one virtual during COVID. So during we're actually in lockdown. Yeah, we're actually in 33rd, but we did a paranormal with Daryl and Mustafa, uh, a, was... a virtual haunted house. And Janice Kovach was also in, involved right. in that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that actually went out nationwide or worldwide. Actually. Yeah. So we were broadcast around the world. That's that's pretty that's amazing. Awesome. You know, it is amazing the way the internet, the the old intranet, <laughs> works, <laughs> and and all the technology um, that that we collectively um, can utilize to bring all sorts of cool things to the masses. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. And you guys have so you guys have another live happening this Halloween. Is that right or no? no? No, currently not. Okay. Okay. This is all in person. Okay. Um, we're back to completely in person, which is okay. everybody's favorite. Um, and we do have two additional related events, which are Lights On, which are two nights, um, two Thursday nights, sure. where scaredy cats like me can come and really get more of a behind the scenes um, look at how the haunted village is set up. So that's October 19th and 26th. And then we have happy haunts, um, three weekends, three Saturdays in October. And that's for the younger future haunters. Um, so those are for the little kids and lots of family fun. Um, October 14, 21 and 28 starts at 10 a.m. Yeah, we get the little guys in here and fill them up with sugar and cider and all that stuff and send them home. That's right. <laughs> you know, that's, that's right. the one thing I love about Halloween is the dual nature of it. You can have the full-on scary Halloween, but then the cute, funny, little kid scary Halloween. But let's get to the Red Mill. What is the legend or story of the mill for lack of a better word well from the paranormal side of you i mean this mill was built in 1810 and mostly uh, irish immigrants were the labor force here and there are three stories of deaths in the mill um so those guys tend to come back. Actually, one of them was a little girl, and that has been the, the running joke around here when we're working late at night is never put your keys down, because they always get lost or moved over to someplace else. And it's happened more than once, so it's it's very true. And we also have a guy on site here re referred to as the supervisor, and he dates back from the 1800s. The old uh, straw fedora hat, <clears throat> suspenders white shirt and baggy pants and there's several documented events of him coming out and screaming at people for being around on his work site wow 
that's freaking cool. That you know, it it never ceases to amaze me how how uh, impressed I am because we had a, a a previous podcast about with the paranormal and and UFOs and stuff. But it never ceases to amaze me. Everybody that comes in contact with or talks about coming in contact with um, the paranormal, I get super excited because I watch it on TV, obviously. But to hear it live and in person, um, talking to to you know folks like you about being there and and actually experiencing that type of of uh, energy because really it is energy right you can yeah. feel it when you're there yeah well there's been actual sightings <laughs> documented um one of the guys that helps us out was here one night by himself pulled in and this supervisor came walking down towards him and he turned tail and ran but wow. <laughs> he he saw him <laughs> Uh, does no. anybody that come in like brand new, do they actually see somebody and think that it's them like a real person? Because I, uh, just, you know, when you, again, when you hear and you watch like, you know, ghost adventures and ghost hunters shows like that, there's always seems to be like a new person or a person in general that thinks that the, this apparition actually works there and they turn around, they turn back and they're gone. Anything happen like that kind of spooky? Actually, we have the documented time with the school. We we run many school tours local, and purely educational, right? Purely <laughs> not haunted, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> when we're not, delineate. Right. When we're not in the haunted season, many school tours come through, and there was one instance where one of the chaperones was waiting for their one of their school girls to come out of the bathroom, and that's when the supervisor came out and hollered at her, and she actually wrote a letter to the director the next day explaining how rude this person was as a visitor that's amazing my jaw is open now, right now how was that situation handled was it a blanket <laughs> apology or was it yeah that was the ghost of the supervisor yeah basically well it, it was you know she basically turned around and he was gone and then when she commented, like I said, she described the supervisor exactly as the hat and the white shirt. And we explained to her that it was not really real. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that school has never been back right. since, exactly. I'm going to assume. <laughs> exactly. I mean, they volunteer to help at the Red, at the Haunted right. every year now. <laughs> really? Oh. Would be a great end of the story. That would be a great. <laughs> that end. would be that. That would be the more fun end to the story. Yeah. But so cool. you mentioned that. So Amy, have you experienced anything while working there? So personally, I have been here for a seance. I had been here. We had a seance up in the okay. top floor, fourth floor, fourth floor of the mill, which is the. That's the most. That's the most alleged haunted area. Well, the third floor is pretty good too. Yeah. And um, I I didn't really see anything, but I also know that my husband, like people had the hair on the back of their necks raised and it mm -hmm. was, uh, it's, it just, there's an ominous feeling. So. Wow. Yeah. wow. Oh, man. It, and it is, I think when you experience it, it's almost kind of like, and it's almost kind of like you don't really know what's happening, but you know something is happening. Is that yeah, is that a good way to put it? it. And, you don't, and you don't forget it, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so weird and crazy. Um, and and it, it is odd that that obviously it's not odd that you guys are a nonprofit, but do the schools know that you guys are haunted and you're bringing kids over? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we try to keep some secrets. <laughs> and generally speaking they're during non-haunting hours so i mean the, oh, the okay. aren't usually the spirits are usually pretty tired At between rest. 10 a.m and yes. 2 p.m so. yeah, exactly kind of like parents when the kids are at school they're like okay that's their break yes yeah. yeah, so that that's their off time 
Now, what a well, we're gonna focus on the mill, but I just want to know what about Clinton overall? Is there any other like activity and other locations, or is it all centered around the mill? No, it's pretty much all over town. Yeah, it's really. Oh yeah, yeah. When I the Clinton House restaurant is notorious for that. Uh, Jamie's old house, where Bender. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, Roth lives. Uh huh. Um, is allegedly pretty spooky. That is the oldest house in town. Is it? I think where Ross lives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I uh, that's on Center Street. Right. I lived on Center Street when I first moved here. The house, my kids were like, we we were there for about two years. They did not complain, but afterwards, when we moved, they were like, that place was haunted. The top floor, you know, um, they went up to play, and there was a cabinet up there for a TV, mm-hmm. and the cabinet door just kind of came open, mm-hmm. like, and it was one of those with a catch. Yeah. So it was um, kind of yeah, scary. There were a lot of pretty old things. Victorian houses around here, so. And back in the day, people had their wakes and their yeah. everything was in your house. Your parlor. And you had your, yeah, you had your parlor. And um, the basement floors were dirt. Yep. So, <laughs> so if you. Knows what's buried in there? Yeah. If you can catch a good graveyard tour here in town, which mm-hmm. you are likely to be able to do too. Um, I know there was a, um, a psychic who saw two women arguing with each other across the street in the two different houses wow. which not actual if you can imagine <laughs> the point is they were yelling but they were in a time a long 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 ago right. I, gotta <laughs> say, I just love that even in debt jersey people will still find a way to <laughs> argue about something with someone yes yes you're on a hundred percent yeah, <laughs> like even in debt, we have to get the final word over someone. Don't mess with Jersey. Exactly. <laughs> so, is it safe to say that that you guys hold paranormal investigations throughout the year? Yeah. And and if anybody now, I don't know if you want this, but if you answer this in any fashion that that you'll you'll entertain any paranormal investigator i'm sure they're going to be hitting you up as soon as as soon as they listen to this episode but is there i mean will you guys let you know any any paranormal uh investigators contact you and will you let them come and and do an investigation how does that work well basically We'll welcome anybody, but we'll talk to them first. And, you know, there are fees. Our ghosts like to get paid. Mm-hmm. So, um, Very Jersey. Yeah. Yeah, nothing for nothing around here. There's the, there is the ghost <laughs> union. Yeah. So. Exactly. Are they on strike yet? <laughs> they found a loophole. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. So, well, yes, we would absolutely welcome it. We've had many. And a lot of them I get to sit through till two o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> Man. that's wow. when a lot of the fun happens. Yeah. The one, we just had one back in Labor Day weekend. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot of fun activity. Really? Wow. That's, that's freaking cool. Do you guys, you know, we, we've talked to a couple of, of haunted locations. One in particular, they let you stay overnight and do almost like a camp out. Do you guys do any kind of thing like that? We've had a couple of requests, and I'm not opposed to it. I just have to make arrangements so that the police department doesn't see a problem and things like that. Right. So, but no, we're not opposed to it. Right. That's that's really cool. Um, and obviously, I like the idea <laughs> of the of the scaredy cat haunted house. <laughs> you get to see behind the scenes. Um, well, I'll, I'll take a minute to brag here. First of all, we're all volunteers. None of us get paid to do what we do. Um, I joke that my wife becomes a widow from September 1st till the end of November because mm-hmm. I'm here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Period. And we we build three buildings. I basically relay it as I build a town in four weeks. Wow. Wow. 
So we use the structures we have, but I also put up additional structures. We have a trail in the back. We cover about five acres of property. So the crew that we have were audio engineers, electrical engineers, builders, designers, painters. I have some of the finest artists I've mm -hmm. ever seen in my life on staff to do hand paintings of props and things like that. So we decided for lights on to brag and I'm just going to put it plain and simple. I'm proud of everything that every one of these volunteers do and I'm proud to show it off. As you should be. And Amazing. what's so what amazes me so much about the town is again, I live in Lodi up in North Jersey. So I'm maybe an hour away from you guys, but mm -hmm. I just love how self-sufficient the town is. And it's really, it goes beyond a town to being a community where it seems like everybody steps up and comes together and has so much pride in the town. And that really gives it an identity and not a, like Lodi doesn't have an identity, you know, no, just it Lodi. It. Hmm? it does have an identity, but we can't repeat it. Oh, <laughs> you mean it's the land of dynamite Italians <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to the other way of saying it <laughs> but no then that's again I mean I'm gonna be there soon for business reasons and I can't wait to just take a tour in fact I'm thinking about who I could get to go with me to visit you know during this time to check out the hauntings yeah, we kick off um, Friday the 13th. Very scary. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Interesting fact, Friday the 13th, the series, the, the film franchise, was all supposed to happen in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jason Voorhees at Camp Crystal Lake, chronically, is in New Jersey. There you go. There you go. Well, we have Voorhees High School. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And here on Center Street, the um, governor of Voorhees, one of the houses on Center Street, belonged to the former governor of Voorhees. Okay. And yeah, lots of, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. One of the other nice things about, you bring up community, mm -hmm. a lot of the, since we are all volunteers, a lot of the local food establishments donate us food to feed all our volunteers. We get a lot of high school volunteers come in. We have a school over in town. It's the 100 in prep school. These kids come in. Last year, they put in over 200 hours helping us paint, move things, get things done. So a lot of local restaurants donate food and all that stuff for us so we can feed these people. And then same thing during production, we get food every night from all the locals to feed our actors because none of those get paid either. Wow. 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 Man, we we got we you you guys just really have it going on as a, a wonderful community as a whole, but a really great com, uh, creative community. Mm. That's that's a beautiful thing. I, that's that's that you know a lot of a lot of communities don't have anything like that, and you guys go full out. Well, it's a heck of a town. That's a lot. Yeah, it's amazing, and to see the transformation too, like. Um, the makeup artists are incredible. Yeah. Uh, again, volunteers. Volunteers. Um, and they're here every, every all six nights oh, yeah. and beyond. Yeah. And um, and the transformation from a normal looking person to somebody who is ghoul ready yeah. it is just it's it's amazing what they can do. Full costume department. Yeah. Gets everybody out there, and we range from your basic zombie up to anything you can imagine. And added bonus, if you're in town those nights, mm. you can see some of the yes. undead walking along the sidewalks. Of yeah, Main Street usually before production starts, they'll walk around town. So you mean someone could be there for a completely non-haunted thing, get eating at one of the restaurants, <laughs> and then just see one of the ghost performers walking around town? Yes, they can. That is awesome. It's awesome. it's wow. So cool. It can be unsettling if you don't know what you're doing, what's yeah. going on. <laughs> we, we've had an issue or two with that. But most of the restaurants, 
Or yes, more than nice. they, they know what's going on, so they welcome the guys to come in. And a lot of our actors are quite clowns, so they'll just pull up a chair and sit next to them at the dinner table, <laughs> chat for a while. That's cool. That's but see, the cool. kind of person I am, as soon as the ghost performer would leave, I would act like nobody's there to try to make the person think they experienced the ghost. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> Mm. How old? How old is Clinton, New Jersey? Oh, let's Oops. see. In twenty ten, no, twenty fifteen. I think we had our hundred and fiftieth. Okay. So, uh, so old. Well, a hundred and <laughs> that was one hundred and fifty. So one hundred and fifty eight ish. Wow. But really, only looks one hundred and fifty. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a young one hundred and fifty eight. Yeah. <laughs> and and how long has the Red Mill been there? obviously all the time right around 1810 1810 1810 man and and it wasn't like built on any indian burial ground right <laughs> uh well it's actually on a quarry so okay. they didn't bury anything around here it's <laughs> solid rock right right but uh we did have some of the uh, lenny lenape indians around here and things like that actually uh in the last paranormal investigation one of the guys said I, I picture a scene and we have a rather high cliff overlooking the mill and he goes I picture a scene of Indians shooting down at settlers from up there wow <laughs> whoa whoa That's... so tell us about more of the spirits that yeah. are at the red mill or is it just the supervisor oh no we have the little girl that likes to toy likes to play it's chivious she, yes okay never never put your keys down when we're here uh things like that but she's uh she just likes to be noticed we usually leave a doll out for her at the one uh door that we have upstairs so she can play with that that's been a tradition for as long as i've been here um and you got just silly little things but those are the two primary characters i know of uh, there was also another story I remember when we have a, the, the mill is four stories tall, and on the third floor currently all our artifacts are stored there, but at one point we had an exhibit there of old sewing machines. And there's a story of some woman came down to the front desk and said, you know, it's wonderful that you have pe people in period clothing working the sewing machines. <laughs> Oh, and no. the person at the desk said, we don't have any such characters. Oh, so. my goodness. <laughs> oh, Ugh, goosebumps. <laughs> so, so those things happen. <laughs> those are absolutely the things that you watch on TV. Go, that could never happen. And it does. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Um, and I was going to ask, because you had mentioned, you know, the 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 scene looking out and the indians looking out what what have some of the strangest uh if there's any more strange um captures that you guys have heard and 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 how does this seance work this is crazy is that do you do seances all the time i know i i know i put a couple of questions in there but geez uh well as far as the seances no we don't do them all the time again we're not opposed to them we do have uh Psyche greeters come in. Uh, sometimes during the event, we'll set up something, and we have tarot card greeters during the thing. That's always a lot of fun. So, um, so we encourage the paranormal. We we embrace it and exploit it. Yeah, yeah, you do well, and in and, and I mean, you exploit it in a good way because I think there's you guys have a lot of history, obviously, at the Red Mill. Yes, and, we do. And is there been any kind of any kind of research that even like Mustafa and Daryl have done to find out like about the um, about the little girl who she may have been or who um, the supervisor would have been? Yeah, yeah, there's been a lot of actual research and then some of the paranormal people will dive into it further and see what they can find but there is you know we we know who the supervisor was the little girl uh she was actually one of the pre 
that had died on site. We have a three story elevator, and but it's an open pit, it's not an elevator. And she was here at work with her father one day and fell through the shaft. So, so that's her. So we have three documented deaths on the site during an operation of the mill. So, wow. I think too, just the the area being as old as it is, and we all right. kind of there's no animosity. Everybody's nope. kind of cool with, like you said, they leave the doll for the little girl spirit, and um, you know, another place I know their house. Um, their spirit in their house is called George. Mm-hmm. And affectionately, mm-hmm. when the curtain, uh, the shower curtain got pulled back and nobody's there um, <laughs> while somebody's showering, it's like, oh, George, you know. So, I mean, people seem to take it in stride. Yeah. And so they embrace it. Embrace it because you can't, <laughs> what yeah. are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess it's just such a great place you don't want to leave. Yeah. That's, That's what it's sounding like. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what what I love so much when I see pictures of Clinton, it's like it could either be the setting for a Stephen King movie or a homework movie. Yes. Well, you know, we did film the horror movie here a couple of years back. That's what I was going to get to, The Haunting on the River, correct? That yes. is the one. Now, all the people who volunteer to help at the Red Mill where they also, because I followed the movie on Facebook, did all of them also volunteer for the movie? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. That's awesome. We actually had the fire department involved, the police department was all involved there in the movie. It was a, a gigantic community event. Man, makes me want to move there. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Um, uh, one one more question from me: uh, Have you guys ever found, or any kind of psychic or ghost investigator, have found any kind of portal at the mill? I'm not aware of any. In all the investigations I've sat through, they haven't come up with anything like that. Interesting, interesting, and I don't think. I don't think necessarily, you know, from what I've heard, I, I, I'm talking like I'm a ghost, ghost, a paranormal investigator, but I don't think if there isn't any portal, I don't think, for the lack of a better word, I don't think it's a big deal to have a portal to be haunted. Right. I don't think because because what if, what if Clinton is a big giant portal somehow? Well, you, know, you might be on to something there. Since we have so many documented stories in the entire town, we could be. We, we could might, be we might not even be here right That's now. right. <laughs> well, you may be not talking to us. I love that. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it. Um, would you guys please send us and tag us even throughout the year about what you guys have going on the red mill we would love to help support you guys and and just further your cause to be such a great location and a town wow you guys are absolutely amazing really yeah again it has been an absolute pleasure having you two on today and again i really feel this is just part one of many conversations we will be having and just fun times because I know you have some Christmas stuff going on too at the mill that we would love to talk about. But Amy, Robert, did I get his name wrong? I'm so sorry. Yes. Ray. <laughs> yeah, Ray, it was an absolute blast having you on today. Thank you so much. And again, we will be, you know, mentioning everything you guys have going on on our social media, sharing everything. And there might be an Instagram thing in the works we're going to have to talk about. But again, thank you both so, so much for coming on. And hey, everybody, like we say each and every week, remember, support our troops.